Capital City Arts Initiative and Western Nevada College's Bristlecone Gallery are delighted to present Kyle Karish's Metallum Terra in the gallery from October 19th through December 17th, 2020. We definitely hope you will stop by to see the show. The gallery is open Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. So this was my very first um, aluminum landscape that I did. And I really wanted to create a piece that was totally recycled materials and repurposed. So when I was first doing this, I had to find the frame initially. So I went to a lot of antique shops, thrift stores to kind of look for one that kind of had the semi-elegant style to it. Because I wanted this idea of elevating this trash to a high art function. So when I was first started this, the construction of it is fairly rough and you can actually see all the nails and tacks that go into each uh, piece, um, which is something that I've kind of honed my skill on later in the other work. So I've kind of hidden all of those elements. But with this piece, it, since it was my first one, it was originally titled 93 aluminum cans in the wall, um, even though it was a depiction of Truckee because that was the amount of material that went into it. Um, but this was really the first kind of experimentation point to see what I could do with the aluminum and how successful I could be with it. And I also wanted to incorporate um, certain aspects of plastic pollution in this, which the background is the uh, convenience store. Thank you, gracias. Yeah, so for this piece illuminated, it was another kind of experimentation on lighting and I wanted to do a nighttime scene and incorporate some symbolism of some fireflies in it. So when I was doing this, I had to collect a lot of dark blue cans, which turned out to be really hard to find. But once I was able to find them and got the background done, it all kind of started just coming together as piece by piece was put on. And I wanted to make it, the trees at least, is, have some depth to them and have a little 3D aspect. So you can kind of see here with the light coming through on the edge with the, the blue kind of fading sunlight. And then I also wanted to try and capture the moonlight reflecting on the landscape itself. So you kind of see some of these lighter green aspects picking up the first remnant of the light and then it kind of flows over the rest of the landscape. And this is my only piece that incorporates LED lighting. I kind of wanted to experiment to see how that would actually function in the piece once it was said and done, especially since it was a, a um, firefly incorporated into it. And the reason why I incorporated the firefly is I wanted to play with kind of the symbolisms and allegories of having this, the firefly representing illumination to this problem and kind of the idea of the material value still left in the objects. So this was actually my very first piece that incorporated any type of trash and really kind of was a starting point for where I go further with my art practice. And now that I think about it later, I kind of reference this as my um, self-portrait piece because this is kind of like, you are what you consume is the idea. And for this, I wanted to incorporate all elements of waste that our society produces. So we have plastic, rubber, aluminum, and even uh, paper waste which comes out to be the camel um, packs of cigarettes that make up the liver. And I thought about doing the camel packs as the lungs, but I thought it might be a little bit too heavy handed. I wanted to add a little bit more ambiguity into the work. So for this piece, I wanted to do a, a kind of fading dust lighting in a winter park scene that you'd kind of see on any um, a city park that you'd find. And the number one thing that I always notice about city parks is the overflowing trash receptacles. And so I wanted to incorporate that into this scene. And I wanted the trash to be kind of piled all around and the trash can completely filled, showing that we kind of don't really care what happens to our trash. We kind of just put it in one place and then leave it. 
And I also wanted to incorporate kind of the plastic bags you see that are blown into tree limbs um, from windstorms. And one other uh, small little subtlety that I put in, which I don't think a lot of people are gonna realize, is actually in the trash can itself in the center is stamped an Ouroboros symbol. And the Ouroboros symbol is an ancient symbol that really is representing rebirth. And I wanted to apply that to the material itself and its transformation of going from waste to a new life, a new prospect. Yeah, so for this piece, I mean, so much of my art practice is really influenced by consumption and our overall collective waste. So for this, I wanted to find out where the largest landfill in the world was, and surprisingly enough, it was right here in the state of Nevada, just north of Las Vegas, being Apex Landfill. And so that was really the, the general inspiration behind this, and I wanted a bunch of different textures in the foreground, kind of illustrating this, these mountains or monuments of trash almost, with this kind of attempted at a beautiful sunset in the background. And I think they can't contrast each other pretty well. So for this piece, I titled it Vanitas. And the theme that I was going for was the uh, Flemish masters from the Netherlands around the 16th, 17th century, like to incorporate these elements into their works that represented the, our mortality as humans. So I wanted to apply that idea to the mortality of these kind of single-use materials. So I wanted to put flowers in the pores of skull. And then I also added in the addition, which also appears in the Flemish paintings, was butterflies. But for this one, I chose to do a black butterfly because black butterflies traditionally represent death. And I wanted that theme to be continuous with the, uh, the single-use kind of shelf life's long, but use is fleeting. Yeah, so for this piece, it's titled Paradise Lost, and I wanted, to, instead of doing a traditional landscape, I wanted something to be intruding onto the landscape. And so much of what we see in our natural park, national parks and elsewhere is trash and human evidence. So I wanted that to be really evident, really the center focal point of this piece. This piece, I wanted to do an adult or add a little subtlety into it and to kind of hide this can that's not too noticeable at first. And it's titled Litterbug. And I wanted this can to be li like its predecessor, Resting Place. I wanted it to be kind of the final resting place of this littered can. And on top of the can lies a damselfly. And so for damselflies and dragonflies, they represent again transformation as they start their life in the water and then end their lives up in the air. And I wanted that to be reminiscent of these materials. They're kind of just tossed to the side, no purpose left in them. But I want people to really see the material value still left in these objects because, I mean, so much could be done with them. And for the frame on this one, it's, it's definitely unique from the rest of them. I wanted the frame to be completely um, aluminum foil because aluminum foil is something that we don't really think of recycling so much, but it definitely ends up in landfills in large quantities. 
So actually I took uh, 150 square feet and pressed it into a mold to create the frame. So for these two pieces, they're actually my pandemic work. Once we were shut out from my studio and I was working from home, I wanted to do something that I didn't need a lot of space for. And I've been collecting a lot of um, these kind of convenience store bags that we see that, again, are never really recycled. And I wanted to make some type of symbolism with them. And so I decided to do a mold of a human skull and then create the, uh, the, the skull out of the plastic itself. And then I added in the addition of aluminum teeth made from aluminum foil as well. Yeah, so this was, this is definitely my favorite piece. I think it's easily my masterpiece. But with this one, I, it's, I mentioned a little bit in litter bug, but with this, I wanted the idea of this resting place of this Coke can in this field of beautiful wildflowers. But I also wanted to add in a more additional symbolism. So right above the can, I added in a monarch uh, caterpillar. And then later in the composition to the left, you'll see a monarch butterfly. And I wanted that to again represent the transformation of the material itself. Um, but this piece is definitely the one that took me the longest. It took about 154 hours. Is, are most of like the pieces you use are intentional, like the um, little skeleton, like the camel tracks on the inside, actually very intentional? Yeah, so, so everything that I put into the work is intentional and it's all thought about. And I want to incorporate with this piece all the different types of waste. So we have plastic waste, aluminum waste, rubber waste, and paper waste. So I mean, and I thought about maybe doing the lungs out of the cigarettes, but then it becomes a little heavy handed. And I wanted to do a little bit more ambiguity, so I made it the liver instead. So a lot of um, people who choose a career in art have some heroes, right? Some or heroines. Um, so people who you really admire. What are yours, and how far back do they go? Yeah. So actually, when I was first starting these panel pieces, I was kind of diving into art history to see other movements and what they were doing. And I found the uh, Hudson River School, which was about between the 1830s and 1860s, and it was a movement kind of with these artists trying to find an American identity, and they found it in the landscape itself. Now later in that school, it really became about the landscape and how it was like pushing the manifest destiny thought, like to claim this land, but I tr transitioned it and I turned it on our perversion of the American land. And then another uh, uh, movement was Art Verde, which is poor art, which came out of Italy in 1970 or 1960s actually. And that was using kind of all these discarded materials that didn't really seem to have value in it. Is there anything that you're working on currently? Yeah, so currently for my Midway show that's coming up in uh, November 16th, it's actually all going to be plastic. So I've moved away from the aluminum. And one piece that's going to be in it is uh, it's called Cognitive Dissidence. And it's a, a giant egret, life-size, made out of, um, was it, milk jugs. And what I did, I had it wading through this pond, but what the pond is made of is all the clear produce packaging I saved over a year, and cut it up all by hand, and it, it's a disgusting amount of what we produce. And it's, it's really hard because as soon as we buy it, toss it, it's out of sight, out of mind. So we don't really realize the impact we're creating, but I have over 60 pounds of that alone for one year. Wow. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah. Are the plastic pieces going to be as shiny as the aluminum ones? They, they're not as shiny, but they are pretty reflective once we're with it. Okay. Mm -hmm. well, now, so my question was like, what made you think to make little bugs out of the can? Yeah, so each of those bugs, it's, there's a symbolism behind it. So with the damselfly and dragonflies, they're also kind of these symbols of transformation because mm -hmm. they start their life in the water and then they, by the time they're fully formed, they're the dragonfly. So it's, again, just an insinuation about the transformation of the material. 